How's it going, everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is part two of What If Deku Had a Half Destruction, Half Creation Cork. And before I start this What If off, I would like to ask you all to put your What If suggestions down in the comment section below. And now, let's begin. Izuku would land on the rooftops with Uraraka in hand, as she would then land as Izuku would ask if she was alright. She would say, yes, I'm alright, that was just quite the scare, I didn't expect the robot to pick me up after the intercom said that the test ended. Yeah, it's quite strange, Izuku would answer back. Possibly a malfunction. I think that has to be the cause. Uraraka would nod her head, agreeing with Izuku, as they would then get down off of the building with the help of Uraraka's cork. As they would then hear over the intercom system, We're sorry about that, all of you testees and students trying to get into UA. That was just a accident. We weren't trying to release that after the test ended. It was a slight malfunction on our end. As Izuku would look back at Uraraka, I guess I was right, you would say, as they would then walk out of the city, as they would then split ways going back to their separate homes. When Izuku would arrive, his parents would walk up to him, asking him how he did, as he would smile at them, saying that he think he did he think he thinks he did great, as they would then hug him, saying that they know he'll make it into UA. Two weeks later, a box will arrive in the mail with a cost not a costume, a uniform, as Izuku would then read the letter, saying that he has been accepted into class 1A, the highest class he could have made it in in the hero course. As Izuku would smile, as his parents would hug him, as Inko would then start crying, saying how her baby had finally done it and gotten into his dream school. As Izuku would say, I guess I did. Did make it. Now it's just the start of my journey into becoming a hero, he would say. As the next day would be a Monday, as Izuku would then go into school wearing his uniform with his pet or his pet cat, as Garfield would be sitting on his shoulder as Izuku would walk. And now I'm going to explain a little bit about Garfield. Garfield has been around since Izuku was four, and Garfield is an ageless cat. The only way he can die is if Izuku will die. So if Izuku dies, Garfield dies. Garfield also has a cork, as anything Izuku creates can have a cork if Izuku so chooses it to have. And when Izuku created Garfield, he happened to give Garfield a cork, which allowed Garfield to turn into any such cat that he wanted to. So basically, Garfield is part of Izuku's cork that also has a cork. It is very powerful as Garfield can transform into a lion if it wants to protect Izuku, if it thinks Izuku is in danger. So when Izuku would walk into UA, as he would then sit down at his desk, or that he chose was to be his desk, as he would sit around waiting for the class to begin. As many students would pile in, as some of them would even go around looking at Izuku's cat, who was sleeping on Izuku's desk. As Izuku made a blanket for Garfield, laying it on top of Garfield, as some of the people would start to pet Garfield, as Garfield would start purring. I don't know how many times I said Garfield there, but it was a lot. As Ido would then run up to Izuku, yelling at him for having a cat in the building. As Izuku would say, relax, relax, this is just a part of my cork. As Ido would then glare at Izuku for disobeying the UA rules in such a sacred school and sacred building. As Ido would then sit down. And all of a sudden, the door would be opened by a yellow caterpillar looking thing. As it would then walk out onto the upper deck part of the classroom where the podium and chalkboard was. As they would then stand up, revealing that there was someone in this caterpillar body. When it was a sleeping bag, as I saw what would step out of the sleeping bag, telling them that they will now begin their class. Please go down to the gym, find your locker rooms, go into there, open your locker, you have to figure out how to get your keys, get your PE uniforms on, and then make it to testing site E 
all within 20 minutes or else you'll be expelled. Now go. As I saw what would say this, many of the students would start to crowd towards the exit or the door as Zuko would open up a window and would jump out of it as he would then jump into or onto a ledge of another window right next to the classroom, which happened to be Class 1B, who had already left for the school orientation. Suzuku would open up the window from the outside since it was opened or unlocked because they were on such a high floor they had no need to lock the windows. Suzuku would then step in, open the door, and would then run off to the principal's office. The schools were empty because all of the classes were at orientation. However, Nezu's office was unlocked. This is because Aizawa had asked Nezu to keep it unlocked so all of the students could go in and find their PE locker keys. Suzuku would run into the room, find where the boys' locker room keys were, as he would then look over to class 1A keys, as he would grab it and then would start to run as Izuku would run all the way down to where the PE locker rooms were. The night before, he had spent studying the just hallways and rooms of UA so that he knew where everything was. He knew where all of the cities were and where everything is, like all of the locker rooms, the cities, testing sites, and training facilities. That is because he did this with a map that was in the box. Everyone got this map, but many people really didn't care. They just thought it was some random map they could hang on their wall. However, this wasn't the case, as Suzuku would then run down to the locker rooms, get changed after opening his locker with the key, get changed, and would then make it to testing ground E in all five minutes. That is because of his training, he was able to use his quick thinking to do this all extremely fast, while some students were still making their way to Nezu's office. As Suzuku would then arrive, Aizawa would tell Izuku, wow, you're the fastest one to ever do this. Congratulations. How fast do you think it will take, or how long do you think it will take your classmates to get here? Oh, I don't actually know. As Aizawa would be staring at Garfield, who was on Izuku's shoulder, as Aizawa would then ask Izuku about Garfield. What is that on your shoulder? Oh, this is my cat, Garfield. He has a cork after I made him with my cork. As Aizawa would raise an eyebrow wondering what he means, as Izuku would explain how he has a creation cork. Aizawa would nod, so you can basically create anything? Izuku would nod his head as Aizawa would say, that's a very powerful cork, I'm glad you became a hero. Zuku would also nod as Aizawa would then activate his quirk and would look over to where Garfield was. And sure enough, Garfield was still there. As Aizawa would ask Izuku if everything he makes is permanent, as Izuku would nod, I, I believe it cannot be destroyed or taken. At least that's what the doctor told me about my quirk when I was 10 after getting a checkup for my quirks and all that. As Aizawa would say, quirks? Yes, um, I have another half of my cork that hasn't really awoken yet. I haven't really been able to train with it since I haven't even been able to use it at all. But I'm happy with my creation cork for now. As I saw, would nod, nod, as finally other students were finally arriving down at testing site E. As Izuku would then be tossed a ball, as I saw, would then speak to the class. Since Midoriya here was the first to arrive, he will get to throw and do the first event first. So please, if you will, step into this circle and throw this ball as far as you can. As Azuku would nod his head, as he would then throw the ball as far as he possibly could, as he would then create many trampolines right in front of the ball as it would then bounce back as you would put it right in front of the ball it would bounce back into this trampoline and would then bounce into another trampoline that was much stronger behind it launching it even further as Izuku would do this multiple times until he just decided to stop as the ball would then go 10,000 meters in front of where the circle was as I saw would look on shocked saying wow you got 10,000 meters another school record Congratulations, Zuku. Now, Bakugo here, you can be next since you got second. Please step up into the box. As Bakugo would, 
throwing the ball as far as possible, as Aizawa would then look down at his device. 2,000 meters, another good throw by another another good throw by a class 1A student. Todoroki, you're next. As Bakugo would then say, wait a, a minute, give me another shot. I have to beat that damn Izuku over there. He can't just easily beat me with stupid trampolines. I have explosions. Those should easily be able to throw farther than him. I saw what would glare at I saw I saw what would glare at Bakugo yelling at him to get back in where the class was and for Todoroki to now step up. As Bakugo would stomp off angrily as Todoroki would then be thrown the ball. As the rest of the students would take the test, as they would then take all of the other tests, as Izuku would look at all of the scores. Well, it appears Izuku has the most potential out of all of you, but that's understandable with what his quirk is. Then you have Momo, and the rest, Bakugo, Todoroki, or Rocket Ninth, as he would then look at the last place being Mineta. Well, it appears Mineta has been ex since he has gotten last place. After watching what you've been able to do, Manette, I have deemed that you have little to no potential at all in the hero industry. You can now leave, as I would say, as Manetta would run off, crying that he won't be able to be in a classroom full of girls like what was class 1A already, pretty much, and that he has to go into a public school and have to deal with all of that, and he's not going to be able to be a strong hero that a ton of people will love. As Izuku would then be walking back to class, as he would then make it to the classroom, walking in, as he would then sit back down. As Aizawa would then arrive, telling the students what their schedule would be, and that they can now go change and then go home. As the students would nod their heads and would then start to walk home, Izuku would walk towards the forest area as he would walk past many construction sites around the UA building, not sure what they would be. As Izuku would then make it to the forest, asking Garfield to turn into some type of cat that can go through forest, say a mountain lion. As Garfield would nod its head, understanding what Izuku said, turning into a mountain lion and would then start to run through the forest at high speeds until they made it to Izuku's house. As Garfield would then let Izuku step off of him, turning back into the tiny house cat that he is that he can stand on Izuku's shoulder. As he Izuku placing his arm down, Garfield would walk up Izuku's arm, placing himself on Izuku's shoulder as Izuku would then walk into their house. Now, two weeks would pass before another crazy event would end up happening at UA, and those two weeks before this would end up being them learning about their hero class, as all of a sudden All Might would run into the room telling all of the kids if they are excited for their first hero class, as some of the kids hyped up by All Might would yell, yeah, jumping out of their seats. As All Might would then say, but before this, I'd like to tell you all something. You all should be moving into dorms within two weeks. We have to ask your parents first, but I would start to pack your stuff, so you can start to move into the dorms as soon as possible. You'll have a week after next week while we're persuading your parents while you're in school so and you could move into the dorms so all of ne all, all of this week you will basically have subs from Tuesday to Friday so next week you'll have all of school off so then you can start to move in to the dorms as the rest of the class would nod their heads understandingly as all might would then tell them that they have now gotten all of their hero costumes fully made and that they can now put their hero costumes on because this is their first hero class and they're going to do an assignment as the students would all be very energetic and excited as they would grab the suitcase with their hero suits in it walking down to the locker rooms before getting changed then getting changed and walking to city site a, which is where All Might told them to go, as they would be standing out front in front of a building, as All Might would then get out a fishbowl with a bunch of names written on pieces of paper, as he would then pull out Momo, and then pull out another name, Izuku, that will be Team A, and Team B will be Uraraka and Bakugo, as 
those will be the villains, since Team B is the villains, Team A will be the heroes, and so that will be the first match. Villain team, you can go ahead and head into the building. There should be a fake paper mache bomb in front of the doorway. Just grab that and go into the building. But f don't forget, if the hero team touches the fake bomb, then that means they they win. And if they just capture all of you, that means they also win. And now you have five minutes to set up the device, and the heroes will have to wait those five minutes until they can head into the building. As they would all nod, as All Might would then sound a timer, as a horn would then play when it would end, as the heroes would then walk into the building, as Asuku would tell Momo to always be on guard. He grew up with Bakugo, Bakugo was in his school, and Bakugo many times tried to sneak attack Izuku, hopefully to try to put Izuku into his place. However, this would never work. Bakugo never trained in martial arts and never knew to always be on guard. However, Izuku relaxed in his own home, but not outside. So when he was school, he would always be on guard. This is because before he got his cork, he would end up being jump scared by Bakugo. That was back when they were still friends though, so he really didn't get hurt by Bakugo jump scaring him. However, with these jump scares, Bakugo would try to throw explosions at Izuku, so this was basically seen as extra dodging practice for Izuku. So Izuku would end up walking and turning around corners with extreme speed so that he could easily take out Bakugo as soon as possible. He knew Bakugo was the stronger opponent. If he can take him out very quickly, Uraka is going to be no sweat. It's going to be very easy. So when he would end up seeing sparks coming from around the corner, he would end up turning, grabbing Momo, and pulling them behind another wall as Bakugo would then jump out saying, Where are you, Izuku? I know you're here. As Izuku would then tell Momo, to run to the top of the building and go through the stairs they saw just around two corners back and just try to go up there and try to get hit the bomb or the fake bomb as I'll deal with Bakugo as this will be a massive time waster if both of us are here. Momo would nod and would then run off as Izuku would then turn the corner as Bakugo would see Izuku. So you finally decided to reveal yourself. Are you ready to die? Bakugo would say, as Izuku would then jump towards Bakugo, and Bakugo doing the same. However, while Izuku was jumping towards him, Izuku would then grab onto the wall using a bar that he had created onto it, grabbing onto it, pulling himself back, and would then kick Bakugo into the hall into the other wall, as Izuku would then punch Bakugo across the face and would then uppercut him right back into the wall, as Bakugo's head would hit along the wall, as he would then fall down completely just confused and in a daze, as he could have suffered a concussion if it was any worse, as Bakugo, now feeling a bit dizzy, would then see a punch going right towards his jaw, as he would collide with his jaw slamming into the upper portion of his jaw, as Bakugo would then fall back completely just knocked out, as Izuku would then start to run over to where the stairs were and would then start to run up them, as he would then arrive to the fifth floor, as he would then hear over the intercom that the heroes win by rule of a knockout and by also touching the device, as Izuku would walk into the final top room to see Uaraka knocked out and Momo also touching the fake bomb. As All Might would congratulate the two for beating the villains, as he would then ask each one of them to get whoever they knocked out and bring them back so that they can be just examined by a recovery girl. And that's where I'm going to leave this what if off, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy part two of what if Deku had a half destruction, half creation cork. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.